mysteries abound around the world. From strange lights in the night sky to ghostly apparitions passing from one realm to the next. From the great pyramids of Egypt to what lies beneath the depths of Loch Ness. From Bigfoot to Atlantis, they are all mysteries waiting to be solved. Join Laurie Phillips, Lauren Smith, Graz, and Billy Simmons as they search for the truth on Nightcaller's Radio. Welcome, everyone. It is February 5th, 2016, and you are listening to Nightcaller's Radio. I'm here tonight with Graz and Billy, and uh, you guys doing all right tonight? Doing good. Doing wonderful, doing wonderful. (laughs) Born won't be with us tonight because guess what? She had her baby last Sunday. Beautiful uh, 17 of 17. Ah. Seven pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it seems like it probably felt like seventeen. Um <laughs> seven pound nine ounces, nineteen and a half inches. His name is Zachary. Not Zachary, Xander. What is wrong with me? Boy, this You're is gonna, gonna be, be a trouble. <laughs> don't even know my own grandson's name. Good lord. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it everything was well. Mother and child are healthy. She's still uh, trying to get all settled in this week. So she'll be back with us probably next week. So it's just me and the guys tonight. And we're bringing you a great show. We've got two guests tonight, so two very special guests, as a matter of fact. And we're going to get to them in a minute. But first of all, we'll find out what Grav and Billy have been up to. Since we last talked. Well, that's going to be a What's short story. We haven't been doing a hell of a lot, have we, Billy? Uh, no, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. Now, Big, yeah. Bigfoot hasn't been doing too cooperative with Billy's place. He's, they've moved on down the road. So, and, yeah. Uh, about the same with me. It's uh, it's just the wrong time of year for me. I'm just having too many physical problems to get out there in the woods right now. I got to wait until the springtime warms up a little bit. Yeah, and I've been spotlighting deer too much. I think I've run everything off from my place, so it's been just kind of a no go, no go. But you know, I did see something interesting today. I and I don't know. I didn't bring this magazine home, but it was a National Geographic. And it said our next human relative or something like that. And on the front of it was a recreation of a skull that they found and um in some South American country. Mm. Um, it's very sketchy. But it looked very similar to the Bigfoot that I saw. Uh except the one that I saw had a lot more hair. But facial wise, it was dead on. And of course, this this skeleton that they found was only four and a half feet tall, but it had a human-like skull, human-like feet, human-like hands, and so uh, it was some sort of uh, pre-man. And so, uh, anyway, they say that we've got a new relative in our chain of um, possible <clears throat> pre-humans, you know. Yeah, but so, I love it uh, when people do an artistic representation of things like that. They always try to humanize it by taking away ninety uh-huh. percent of its hair, you know, so it just looks like a, a really bad hippie on a bad day or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it actually, it could actually be a pretty, pretty hairy person, you know, it could actually Absolutely. look like a squatch. If they had put hair on this thing, it would have looked exactly like some of the the representations of Sasquatch that I've seen. It was just, I mean, it caught my eye because I walked into the office there, there it was on the table, and I was like, wow. Picked it up and looked at it, and I thought, that is interesting. So I I don't know. I don't know, but it really was interesting. But other than that, my life has just been really boring, other than now that I'm a nana again. 
So I'm mm-hmm. excited about that. I will get to see Lauren's this baby in the more. next few months. What about Lauren? Yeah, so her life is far from boring. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But she's got a toddler and a newborn, and her husband works at night. <laughs> That's just going to be lovely. So, mm. yeah, she's got a she's got her handful, you know. So, anyway, she's uh, she's doing well, and she misses us all. I want to tell everyone hello, and she'll be back soon. She sure will. So, if there's nothing else to share, guys, do you have anything? Nope. Let's move on okay, to our guests. Then. We're uh, going to be uh, doing a lot of switch hitting tonight anyway. Yes, we we do have two guests tonight, and uh, our first guest is Tracy Arnold. And if uh, Grabs will read that introduction, we'll go ahead and bring Tracy Arnold on. Okay. Well, Night Callers presents Tracy Arnold, and Tracy has been a researcher for five years. As he looked into the reports locally and found the proof that they are here, he created a group called the New River Valley Bigfoot Organization two years ago. This past August, Tracy had his first sighting in daylight, and it wasn't what he expected. Now he is honored to have a great group of guys that are on the same level as he is, a group that is focused on bringing the truth out and finding the right way of finding evidence without killing one. They're here in Virginia, and Tracy is proud of what he has found to be real. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Grass. Tracy, welcome to Night Caller Bigfoot Radio. Well, thank you, and uh, that sounds really good. <laughs> but what I put, uh, <laughs> and congratu- congratulations, Nana, and uh, the rest of you thank there you. Just, uh, on the youngin. I know that's a proud thing to have, you know, in your life as a youngin, because ours are growing up so fast. <laughs> I know. I just hated that I could not be there. And I, I'm yeah. glad you called me Nana and not Grandma because, oh, I just can't. No, I don't want to be a Grandma. I don't mind being a Nana, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tracy, how did you get started on um, uh, what, how did you develop an interest? Well, you know, as a kid, I seen the Patterson Gimlin footage, of course, and I, uh, you know, seen that, and it always struck me as being real because, you know, you know, kids do have imagination, but there was something about that that, you know, you know, movie, you know, movie couldn't produce, you know, such a, you know, such something as big as that is, uh, you know, is what I saw, you know, from you know, about like '67, and I seen it on the you know, actually evening news they were trying to debunk it even then in the early 80s uh it was uh dan rather i believe had had the story on and uh uh after you know you see it and you think okay they're on the west coast and you know i don't want to go there <laughs> as a kid and later on uh, in life you know uh we have had some different things happen you know at, uh, through life you know it was my dad and i we were we went in the we back in the eighties you can burn copper and you know, it wasn't an environmental thing to you know, wasn't nothing really against it then. And you really didn't know what you were doing because, you know, it was just burning copper and making money. And uh we had started burning this copper and we dumped for like three weeks, but on the first night we were out there burning copper and me and dad heard something just, just bellowing out. I mean, just up and down and all this, and I asked Dad, I said, what is that? He said, you know, probably a deer got hit on the interstate. Well, this went on for three weeks every night from 5 to 10 o'clock at night. We was out there burning, and uh, you know, burning the copper. Uh, about three nights before we stopped burning copper, I asked Dad, I said, you know, Dad, it take an awful long time for that deer to die. And it would be <laughs> in a different lo- location every, every night. It would be in a different location, either up on the hill behind us or across the road in the in the deep, you know, deep wood. And it would get further away as the night went on, you know, as it was bailing. And, you know, later on, uh, of course, you know, my son and I, we used to watch Bigfoot, you know, find Bigfoot when it came out. And uh, on the second second season, the second episode of Ohio, uh, 
a uh, guy stands up in the, you know, in the audience with the audio recorder and says, I got this like three nights ago. It's right behind us, 35 yards, and he played it. And uh, Coach Hill hit me from head to toe because it was wow. the same thing that I heard as an eight-year-old. And I was like, okay, if I heard that, I heard a Bigfoot, if that's what that is. <laughs> so wow. that kind of got my interest, and we went to a different to a location that me and my wife had actually – got creeped out one night uh, and me and my son was up there he done like Bobo and Renee and you know all of them you know he just sit there and be on trees and stuff like that well uh, about an hour after being there you know you hear something walk across the road behind us and we, we actually moved down from there because of that I, you know, I got kind of you know, kind of scared but we went on down and uh Sat there for another bit, and here comes this rock uh, through the trees and lands behind our van. And it was a nine and a quarter pound rock, cause I got it, you know, after after it got after it hit the ground, and we kind of we went down the road. And I was like, well, I can't get that rock, cause nobody's gonna believe us. Exactly. <laughs> so I went I went back up the road and I leaned out the door and got it and threw it in the back, and we took off, you know. And I was like, uh, Elijah, what was that? He's like, uh, that rock came from down there. I don't know what that was. <laughs> so after doing, you know, some research, more research on on computer, I found out they actually throw rocks. And I was like, okay, it, I mean, that does it. That, it has to be something there because, you know, if people are kind of like moonshiners or something like that. Uh, nine and a quarter pound rock from 35 yards away take an awful big man, uh, you know, to chunk it as high as it did and, land the way it did and so we after after that I started uh, you know putting in uh, the you know one of our papers that are free is free here like the trading post trading times and uh, actually throughout you know a little bit of time I mean it had 76 reports to check into and over wow. over that period of time of checking out as many as I could out of nine counties uh, it, it all seemed to start falling into place like a puzzle uh, as far as finding footprints and these uh, tree structures, TP structures, you know, TP structures, X's, uh, twists and snaps is what they call them, you know, the, the saplings that are twisted at the top and look over. Uh, and, you know, mainly the footprints was my biggest thing that I was finding uh, in one area. Uh, you know, I found 33 over a two-year period of time. And it was, you know, during the uh, late winter to uh, uh, about middle of summer is when I found them in that area. Put me on the, you know, on the chase of, okay, where are they at this time of year? Where are they at this time of year? So I started uh, zoning off the areas and calling it different areas, you know, like Sasquatch Mountain, uh Sasquatch Creek, uh, I got the Sasquatch Trails, uh, Sasquatch Highway, and each time I get a report, it would be in one of those research areas. Wow. And I, I build, I'm pinpointing, you know, where they're at at different parts of the season, you know, different, different times of the seasons. And uh, right now I've got nine different sized foot tracks that I have found over the last, you know, uh, Three years. I um, wanted to let everyone out there that's listening know that in the slide show, he has got quite a few. Uh, he has got quite a few pictures of his research area and some of the things he's found. Really great pictures. So, uh, is that their door? I'm hearing. I'm sorry. I had to pull up. There was a rig, rig pulled up beside of me. I'm up here in the parking lot where I work at. <laughs> Sorry about okay. that. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let, uh, can you tell us about your... Well, uh, do you mind... Um, well, you're kind of going somewhere with all this, aren't you? So if you want me to, I can let you go this way or... Or I could go well, ahead and ask you 
about your sighting, and it, and you said it wasn't anything you expected. Right. And if if you could tell us what time of day it was and give us as much detail about it, that would be mm-hmm. much appreciated. We'd love to hear it. I uh, sure can. Uh, well, uh, you know, I can. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That was uh, that was my next step because you know after finding the footprints, you know, in these certain areas, uh, there was this one particular place that had sightings at uh, in August, of the, you know, that time of year, and it was a uh, uh, it was a place where the BFRO has had two or three sightings, and I had had four different. Uh, encounters coming from people from that area. So I thought, well, it's, you know, that time of year, let's, you know, you just go up there. This is only like four miles from one of my main research areas. And I uh, thought, well, I'll just go up here and check it out. Well, it was a very warm day. It was in August. Uh, I think the temperature around about 92, 93 that day. Humidity was pretty high. I mean, I was sweating. And uh, a real clear day. Uh, it was kind of foggy that morning, so you know the, after the fog and drizzle kind of left, it was about ten thirty. But when I got back down to the bottom of the mountain, it was a totally different world. You know, the sun was out; it was warm, muggy, and this is only probably a mile and a half from uh, New River itself before it goes into uh, West Virginia from uh, Virginia. And uh, actually, find a Bigfoot had been there probably. The year before that, in the fall, uh, during one of their one of their Virginia episodes, and you know that's what kind of got me down that way uh, towards the Blacksburg area, uh, one of the research areas. And so I figured okay, I'll still up here and uh, look around a couple of these campsites because they, you know, there was a couple of reports that come from there. And uh, I had went up there and looked around and. You know, found a couple of different things that, you know, said, okay, this could be a Sasquatch, but it could be human. I'm not sure. So I didn't even document, I didn't document it, didn't uh, take no pictures like I normally do, because, uh, you know, it was right beside the camping area and the picnic area. So I kind of, you know, shrugged it off a little bit. I thought, well, they, you know, they could be here. I mean, that's a lot of forest, you know, and you're right on the Appalachian Trail and right along the border of West Virginia, I'm pretty sure, you know. Good possibility they're here. So, on my way out from investigating that one particular area, uh, I decided, you know, there was this place at the bottom, I, and it was called, uh, you know, Cherokee, uh, Cherokee something else. I can't tell you exactly where because I, I want to kind of protect the location from my own research. But I nicknamed it uh, Cherokee Falls. For one particular reason, I thought there was a waterfall there. And I'll tell you about that here in just just a minute. But I hear this, you know, I come down the road and I pull in there. It's like a, you know, it's like a day area only. Uh, got a hiking trail. Uh, it goes around uh, the creek all the way or over to a bridge, and you see this little waterfall. It's like two foot tall. I mean, it ain't mind blowing, but you know, I thought it might be bigger mm-hmm. than I you know. <laughs> so I'd heard about everybody saying how beautiful it was. Well, the place is beautiful, but the waterfall I had seen, you know, some around here, 14 feet, 20 foot tall. And, you know, it's kind of like disappointing to find out later that, you know, it's a two foot waterfall. And, you know, <laughs> I was up there taking pictures for my nature walks photos. That's another uh, page I've got up on my Facebook. And, uh, you know, I was going through our, you know, Looking around, I can hear this waterfall getting close. I'm probably uh, about 200 yards from you know the from the parking lot, and uh, I'm snap one picture and uh, keep on walking a little ways more. You know, about maybe another two or three minutes. I hear a, a, a crack off to my off to my right, and you know, at this time, I'm not thinking of Sasquatch. I'm just going in. I'm gonna get this picture, of this waterfall from my, you know, from my other Facebook page. Uh, I think, okay, it's just a deer, and I keep walking. Uh, about another 15 yards or so, I, 
I'm on my left foot taking a step with my right foot, and all at once I am froze in my in my tracks. I'm I'm just froze. I can't move. Uh, chill bumps from head to toe, high raised up. Something ain't right. Uh, wow. I look to my I'm I'm looking over here to the, my left at the water when it happens, and then I just look to my right real slow, and there's an opening between the row of oil to my right. And there's a creature standing right in the middle of that opening. On the other side of the knoll uh, is huge, like the size of the front end of my Jeep, uh, just standing there. And all I could see is from the mid-torso, above the mid-torso up. Uh, I don't see hands. All I see is the, the arms draped down, one sticking out to the right, just trying to stand that stance. Mm. And his mouth is open. His eyes are wide open. His eyes are huge. My world changed that day because that wasn't what I was looking for, uh, really, seriously. Uh, it was uh, massive. And it took, you know, to not just pass up the encounter, you know, not, not just to pass by this encounter, but it took Dennis Taylor a while to drag me back in the woods again. It was oh. probably a, a month or more. But I was terrified. It terrified me. And when I looked at it, I could see the detail of the face, the eyes, uh, the mouth, the nose. I didn't see no ears. Uh, and I've actually recorded my way out, which, you know, after uh, viewing this thing for probably, I don't know, eight seconds. I back, I back out like a bear, you know, like if it's a bear. You know how you back away real slow? Right. And until it wasn't in the evening, I just started around. I had, my, I had my, my cell phone in my hand and did not raise my cell phone to take a picture or video or not. Don't beat it, yourself up over that now. That yeah, happens I, a lot. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh but like I'm thinking too, you know, in the last, you know, since since that happened about three or four months, you know, three or four months ago, I got to think, well, if I did get a picture, it'd be the blurriest kind of picture you ever see. I was shaking so hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's serious. I mean, it's, it's a wonder we don't see, you know, more blurry or bigfoot than what we do. Because, <laughs> I mean, if I if I'd have had the composure to actually hit that button and take a picture, you wouldn't have seen nothing but green. Because it was so much oil thicking around. No, oh, we uh, could blame it on a portal or something that did it to it. Oh God, <laughs> don't know <either. laughs> Yeah, it was standing in the middle of How far away was it? <laughs> That's oh. what it was. That's what it was. It wasn't me shaking feet. like a leaf. It was a portal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm, How I'm far away I'm, were you from it, Tracy? I think it was twenty, twenty-four feet. Oh, that's close. Yes, really? uh, mm-hmm. if, the, if the thing would have wanted me, it could have had me in one step. <laughs> you know, and, oh. and it's doing, it's doing what you know what what I did as far as getting out of there. That was that fear that it was going to hurt me. Mm-hmm. But over over time, you get to looking at it, and they talk to different people. You know, ones that's had their encounters, and ones that have no fear yet of what they're looking for. Uh, you see that. You know, if it was going to hurt me, I wouldn't have known it was there, and I would have just been gone. <laughs> you know, yeah. it wouldn't, you know, if they were going to kill me, there would be a lot more people up there than this one. Yeah. So, but, of course, do you, you know. Do you ever think back and think what you would have done differently? That's what everyone no. does. I tell you, you I, would... I thought about stuff I'd have done differently, but there's nothing I could have done differently. Yeah. I mean, the the, ter- the terrifying moment that you have, and that was the first one I've actually laid eyes on in daytime. I mean, it's broad daylight. It's like 11.30, something to 12 in the morning when I actually had the encounter. And it was just, it was an overwhelming feeling just to know that, okay, uh, I've been looking for these things. I never thought I'd see them in the daytime. And it's here standing in front of me. I mean, it's like one of those things that you don't expect it. And 
at that time, you know, I wasn't even thinking of Sasquatch. I was thinking, hey, look at this picture of this waterfall up here that's only two feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, uh, a friend of mine, Dennis Taylor, I, I met him quite a bit, but a friend of mine, Dennis Taylor, he uh, he actually went up there to, that evening after I had my encounter on Friday evening, and uh, he he went all the way to a bridge that's up there that crosses over the creek or over a small creek or something like that. And he says, you know, he tell, gives me all this information, you know, that there's no really good drop-offs on the side of those little knolls or you know, it's kind of like flat up through there in different places. And the only place that, that drops off like that is right there near the bridge. But I, would, I didn't even see a bridge. And I'm thinking, okay, well, and he comes back, you know, he goes up there, I think, again on the Saturday or the Sunday after that and finds out, you know, that there's an animal trail on the other side of that little bush, on the other side of the little bushes. Uh, you know, it gives me all this information that I didn't see while I was there. And I'm kind of putting two and two together over time that this thing was stuck down there because the road was just on the other side of that. The mountain was on the other side of the road. The river is on the other side of the other side of the river. The north Have you down. been back to that spot yet? No, I have not been back since. Oh and my God! This is this is only a four. This is only a forty minute drive from my home. So <laughs> I haven't I haven't been back yet. I mean, I'm I'm terrified to go back to that spot. Uh, I can, right. you know, even though it's been a few months, you know. And I'm in, you know, the next year, I'm still, when I go in the woods, I'm, I don't let my guard down for nothing now, you know. I uh, used to be looking for a bear to make sure I don't run up on a bear or a snake, but now it's like, I don't want to see one of them again, even though I'm not mm-hmm. there looking for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I feel too that's... bad about that. I ran away from my sighting, too. Uh, I actually just, <laughs> I, I, didn't even have, I didn't even have time to stand there and look at it. I just uh, my instincts hit in, and phew, I ran through the brambles all the way back to my jeep. So you're, uh, deep, huh? you're out in the middle of the woods alone, and you've got a thousand pounds of pure joy staring you down. You don't uh, your instincts kick in sometimes. Yeah. Well, mine was a little slow, <laughs> by eight seconds. <laughs> well, uh, Tracy, I got to ask you: Can you? You say his mouth was open. Did you see any teeth, or was no, it? And, it and what was, kind of expression did he have? It was uh, the same as it, mine. <laughs> I'll John? be honest with you. It was the same as mine. Uh, it was it, the thing that was so different about it, it. It had reaction to me being there. That's why I say it was a totally different experience from what I thought it would be. You know, to to actually see one. Because his mouth was open like mine, uh, I couldn't see no teeth. It was more uh, dark around his mouth. Uh, there was, you know, short hair on the face, like a beard. But as it, uh-huh. you know, as you went down, it kind of got longer on his uh, below his chest, and his arms had eighteen inches of hair hanging off the one to the right, the the left side. Well, his right side had, you know, had where his, had his arm out, had, had like eighteen inches of hair. You know, long stringy hair on the right side. Uh, the head, the head might have had a slight comb, but it, it I, I noticed that the, the hair was short around the top, and, and and it was places on his chest where it was bare, you know, where the you know where the chest muscles are, and I could see that, I could see muscle definition. It's kind of like a beige and brown looking color. Wow. With a uh-huh. little bit of reddish in it too. Uh huh. It was just I don't know the the way the the sun was kindly hitting in that one particular area. It was just yeah, it was like the I could see I could see it as dark, but at the same time it was it was lighter. You know the, the skin was lighter. Mm-hmm. And it was more like a, I mean, if we had brown bear around here, I'd say, okay, as a brown bear, I'm going to keep walking, you know. <laughs> so we don't have brown bear. And this thing didn't have a snoot or nothing. It nose was flat on his face, uh, probably two inches wide. Uh, mm-hmm. The the mouth, 
the picture that uh, Miss Alex uh, painted, uh, uh, draw for me. The one that's was, in the slide show, everyone. It, it was the picture of it. Wow. Only with his, his mouth was open. I couldn't find nothing that, you know, that had the same lips that, you know, the mouth was open on her, uh, you know, where you choose, you know, what, what the figure looked like or, or whatever, you know, the face looked like. But the lips on the the the, the drawing were that exact, you know, that definition. Yeah, they were like narrow. I mean, they were they weren't they were slim. They weren't like you know like a, a monkey. You know, they were similar to a, a monkey, but at the same time, they had you know they were just different. I mean, it looked more human than you know the, the primate to me. And his reaction was more human than primate. That's what you know. That's what makes it so much different for me. Cause I was expecting to see a darn monkey, you know, pounder on, you know, walking through the woods, you know. And but you know they're expect- big, but you don't expect them to be. You, you you hear about them being nine, ten feet tall, and you know that's what they're going to be. But when you see them and they're that big, right. It just blows your mind because you just never had your mind wrapped around how big they really are. And most of the time when people see them, they're at a distance. So it's mm-hmm. not as mind-numbing as when you have an encounter with it and you're within 50 feet of one. Because right. that's when you can see how very big they actually are in, compar- in scale. And uh, I think that's what terrified you. He said he was so close. Had he been further away, yeah, it might not have terrified you as bad, but he was so close, and they're so fast. Um, He could have been on top of you and nothing flat. Oh, yeah. Well, it sounds like you two walked up on each other. Well, (laughs) well, that's funny you said that. Uh, Dennis Taylor, you know, me me and him talk, and at that area of you know, around about where I had seen it, it could have been down on its knees, maybe, maybe hunting or waiting for something to come through the net. It might have been getting ready to ambush another animal or something that I might have ran off. Uh, I'm not sure, but if it was, <laughs> I mean, it was awfully, awfully tall to be down on its knees. Uh, Estimation on the height on this thing was anywhere from eight and a half to nine and a half foot tall. Uh, from the location that I was in and where it was at, way it was positioned. I mean, I've probably seen, you know, five foot of his body and only seen three quarters of it, maybe. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's very scary to think, you know, this thing, if it would have stood up, I would have probably just passed out on the trail, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Or if it, or if I'd have seen the entire length, you know, the, the from the foot to the head, it was probably been worse for me. I may not have made it out of there. <laughs> on on my way out, I actually got lost, and there was only one trail going in that I seen when I was going in. On my way out, there was another trail to the right, and I could not remember that trail. I got to that point, and I was like, uh. Okay, <laughs> which way do I go now? <laughs> you know, here I am. Well, I'm terrified now. I'm get I get down to this point where I, uh, which way do I go? And I had to sit. I had to stand there for probably about fifteen seconds and watch them behind of me. Cameras rolling, and my phones are taking you know, videos. And I'm thinking, okay, okay, let me think. Lower bushes to the right, all the way in. So I go to my left, and now I pick the right path. <laughs> You know, uh, oh. and I get to this one area, and this thing actually makes a noise. Uh, I'm just standing there observing to see if it's moving through the woods, you know, to see if I could hear it. And I hear it from about 25 yards off from me. And I had been walking back out of there for at least uh, two minutes at a good pace. I'm almost out, but I can hear it about 25 yards away from me. And I couldn't tell if it was a, a grunt. Or if it was a uh, something been thrown down on the ground, I mean, it was just it was just that bait to me. 
uh, I've even got that, and I've even got that video on my YouTube channel, and uh, somewhere along on my New River Valley Bigfoot organization page too. But the video on the way out is more. Uh, it was more of my security blanket to where if this thing did charge me or if it come back and they kill me, you know, at least somebody will see it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Be like the yeah. Blair Witch Project. It'd be nothing yeah, left but yeah. the video camera. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, oh, I mean, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what else to do. Really, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I surely wasn't going back over there to talk to it. <laughs> I mean, just hit the camera and get out. You know. <laughs> but it's been a ride and a half the last few years. It really has. Oh, I you know. bet it has. I bet it has. Hey, Grass, can you check your Skype, please? I've left you a message. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. You got so, it? Yeah. Get back in a moment. All right. So um, you personally have been back to that spot. What have you been doing? Everywhere else but there. It's, uh, right now, uh, uh, well, this past, you know, Past couple of years been kind of rough on my family. I've lost my dad to lung cancer. Uh, mm-hmm. My mom is uh, uh, dealing with uh, cancer too. Uh, she's dealt with two different types of cancer in the past uh, two years. And uh, yeah, I kind of got my hands full with family and uh, taking care of my yeah. family and everything. But I do get out. I do get out a lot more than what I had been in the past. Uh, I tried to keep it more locally now. I'm mainly here in uh in my own county, Wiff County. And uh I've uh started uh, uh researching uh, real heavily in uh, the area I call Sasquatch Mountain. Uh got numerous reports coming from the area uh, uh over the last four years and it's continuing. It's not like a, it ends and comes back, it ends and comes back. It's more of like a all year round thing or uh the reports. And uh just recently today, I uh, went in the Sasquatch Creek and uh, found some uh, tree structures, what they call the uh, uh, standing your side of fence. This is my side uh, structures. It's where you find the trees all pointing one direction along a road or a trail, and it's kind of facing toward the road from the hillside, and they're all pointing the same direction, like, okay, you stay on this side, uh, this is my side. And kind of like through three of the zones I, I do today, uh started zoning zoning out on a map, uh, different parts of the area. Uh, you're calling it zone one of Sasquatch Creek, zone two, zone three, all the way through five. And as far as I got today, but I found uh several uh several of the same trees, uh same diameter, uh just snapped over broke and facing down to the road. And I have found that in several different areas that have had Sasquatch activity around, you know, different, you know, nine different counties. And I think I'm getting a little closer to the uh, trackway. That's what I'm really looking for right now is the trackway that you use to go from the Appalachian Trail to the Blue Ridge Parkway. It seems to be a hot trying, area. We've had over. other guests on that have said the same thing. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at one time, uh, I called this ground zero because mm-hmm. we've got we've got mountains east, west, uh, south, and the north that go or come around with county and Pulaski County, and uh, it's like. Uh, you can go along the Appalachian Trail and get your reports from there and then go all the way over to the other side of the town here and find the same things on this mountain as you can on the other side. And I believe it's more than, you know, one group because each group does something a little different to, you know, you know, if they're territorial, they're going to do things to show, okay, this is my territory. You don't come by this here. And I have found that in two, you know, three different parts of the county here. Uh, but the, you know, as far as reports from this county, there's, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, on the 
the BFRO web uh, on the BFRO uh, uh, thing that they document their reports on. Uh, there's three in this county. Uh, one county over's got two, and the next county down from us has got one. The next county north of here's got one. So I'm like, okay, I've got really nine counties around this area. In between the whole nine counties, there's over 20 some reports just on the BFRO, and plus the you know 79 and growing that I've got. Wow! Uh, just from the nine counties. So you say you've created a group. You call it the New River Valley Group. Is yeah, that? The, yeah, the New River Valley Bigfoot Organization. And uh, by the way, it is a. Uh, uh, a division of the East Coast Bigfoot Researchers Organization, uh, Daniel Benoit's organization. Uh, you know, it's kind of like you know, we're you know, he he, uh, me and him tied our two groups together and made it one big family. You know, and uh, but as far as locally in the New River, you know, I've got I got five guys that uh, keep in contact with me a lot. You know, on some things that they find. Uh, from uh let's see Tony Tony Lester, uh Dennis Taylor, Michael Gilman, uh and uh you know, Eric Klein, uh, you know, there's several of us that uh, you know, and Cliff Stanley. I think forget old Cliff, he's a good he's a good one too. Uh <laughs> between between you know, between the five, uh, we go out and you know, we, we you know, we can have open minds and have great ideas together. And coming up here in two months, I'm I'm hoping to have a town hall meeting right here in the town of Liffville, uh for us to get together and share information and gather more evidence uh, from the locals here. I'm sure there's more than what we've got on, you know, what we've got on paper and what we hear from the grapevine and all this stuff, you know. So I'm hoping it'll bring more people out. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, when I get ready to to do this, I will have it on my Facebook page and on the uh I'm gonna do it kind of like spur the moment. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be a notification like said within two weeks of it. Yeah. And uh, try to you know I'm not gonna put it out there two or three months ahead of time because uh, that don't never work out for me. If I'm, okay. close, if I'm close to it, you know, okay, we're going to have this thing now. Let everybody know and hope everybody can come. But I'm hoping to get on the uh, radio, too, uh, down here at the uh, the local Whistle radio station. Uh, hoping to get it on there and uh, maybe put it in a paper or something, uh, trying to get more local. If you let us and, know, we'll announce it for you on our show as well, if you'd like. Well, that'd be great. I'll I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah, uh, well, you have about ten minutes left. I know. And, uh, just... <laughs> to let everyone know out there, we are bringing Tracy back. He has to go to work in about six. Yeah. Well, in about ten minutes. So uh, we only can do an hour with Tracy, and he's got way more to tell. Oh, way yeah, more to yeah. tell. He, he has kind of spread it out a little bit tonight for us. So uh, is there anything you want to share with us in the last 10 minutes that you would really like to cover in this show? Uh, well, yeah, I would. Uh, you know, as far as doing research and being out in the field as much as you can possibly get out in the field, that's the only way you're going to be able to to confirm it for yourself, discover it for yourself. Uh, a lot of people ridicule people for having groups like this, and you know, ah, you seen one? You sure you seen one? You know, and all this stuff. So what I try to tell everybody is, you know, you could be a skeptic, and don't criticize the person that you're skepticism on, because yeah. that person, that person is out there in the field finding what is tied to Sasquatch. Had in the encounters, like we had uh, me and Daniel Benoit and Cliff and all of us had in the up there in the uh, Elkhorn Lake uh, 
back in uh, 2000, I think it's 13 or 14. Yeah, 13. We had the eye shine, uh, you know, happen to us. That was one of the first visual in- encounters I had, but it was dark. Couldn't see it. Had night vision, couldn't get it to work. But until you get out there and and put your feet on the ground and start walking through the woods and get with somebody that knows a lot about it and learn from them and kind of tie it to what you've got in your in in their areas that you're working in. You know, there's there's no way that I can criticize somebody for saying, okay, I've seen an alien. Because just because I haven't seen one don't mean it ain't there. Exactly. And why should, you know, why should people criticize each other for, you know, having their sightings? I mean, I I, I see this a lot on Facebook uh, and, mm-hmm. you know, through the, you know, social media. Oh, that guy didn't see nothing. Look, I mean, he, he's showing footprints, but, I mean, where's the Sasquatch? Well, you know, <laughs> he's got his boots on the ground. He found something. And until we stop, you know, criticizing each other and putting each other down, look into it yourself and get your boots on the ground and get out there and have your own encounter. Mm. That's the only way you're going to prove it for yourself as a, as a discovery. I've got a picture on my Facebook page on New River. It says, uh, tomorrow is a, is a new discovery. And when I put that on there, I didn't know what I was putting on there till last year. Uh-huh. So somebody can discover these things and bring it to all the public that they want to. But there is a way of having your own discovery and having it yours. I mean, science don't have to tell me that it's real now. I already know. And these people that have their sightings, they've had their discovery. They know they're there. They know they're real. But a lot of people waiting on science. Why wait on science? Go out and find it yourself. Well, you know, I've always said we wouldn't know what we know now if it weren't not for people like you that get out there and do what they do. Because if we were waiting on science, we wouldn't know anything <clears throat> about that much. Well, there are a lot of people out there that we could call them, uh, you know, desk jockeys and things like that. But there's also a lot of people out there who can't physically go out there, who aren't physically able to do it. But they're still interested in squats, and they want to know. Yeah, Uh, exactly. So there's there's nothing wrong with being a computer jockey. I just happen to be one right now because of my physical problems temporarily. But... but there are a lot of people out there in some of these groups that just uh, have a personality that just loves criticizing everything that comes down the block. And you, you have to write them off. Right. There's right. going to be that. I know exactly. Yeah. But, you know, my, my first, you know, so many months, I was on the computer looking. I mean, you know, after, after watching Finding Bigfoot and hearing that on, you know, what I heard, you know, when I was eight years old, I sat on the computer a lot. And, you know, and then one day my son comes to me and says, okay, Dale, uh, when are we going to go to squatch? <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can, you know. And, you know, I was ready to go, too, after, you know, seeing what I've seen on Facebook, you know, or on the YouTube channels and all that stuff. I've seen all the hosts. So I can pretty mm-hmm. much now look at a video and tell, you know, okay, right there, you know, that's a hoax. Look at, look at the way the shoes fill on that Sasquatch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now you could pretty much pick out what is a hoax and everything. You got to look in all the reports, the good ones and the bad ones, to to really right. make sense of all of it. But yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I don't. You know, if I couldn't get out in the woods, I'm for sure I would be in that same situation where I'd keep up with it. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, find out what everybody's finding. Just wait for something to happen. I mean, uh, I know one day that that might happen, you know, that I might have to get behind the computer and and stay behind the computer for a while or something. But uh, there is nothing holding me back to try to keep a track of all these, you know, all these different reports and hoping to get new ones this year, you know, to look into. Uh, Michael Gilman, one of them that is, uh, he's into the big stuff. He, you know, really kind of questions a little bit of everything, which, I do too. 
but he has a cave on his property. And, you know, just out of chance, we went up there looking on his property because it was along the creek and uh, found the cave and uh, he, that he told us about. And we also found five dead goats. And uh, one of them was still in good tack with his neck broke and not a mark on it. And 40 minutes after we left and putting audio recorders out and a trail camera out on the other goat, uh, there was a scream come from that area. And we got it documented. And uh, uh-huh. and he was with us when we left. You know, we stayed together probably about an hour and ten minutes after we left the property. So I know it wasn't nobody else up there. <laughs> it's all private land and uh, a few neighbors down a good piece from there, but nothing but the audio recorder would have picked up at that close range. I think we ticked one off just been there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We was there like five and a half hours that day. You uh, interrupted yeah. their supper. Hmm? <laughs> you interrupted their supper. Oh, yeah. I think we did. And, but it didn't come back. You put a game goes. cam right in front of their cave, and they don't like game cams. Yeah, we've done that, too. We put a game camera in front of the cave and a game camera on the goat that was at the third top. You know, it was a pretty good size clip we had to go down. Uh, you know how you watch uh, mountain monsters? You know how they say buck down? Oh, God, mm-hmm. I was down that hill like four or five times that day. <laughs> it was a wow. steep climb. And I was up, uh, Tracy's down. <laughs> you know, every time we turned around, I was down on the ground picking myself back up. Oh, so my God. Steep grade all the way down. I could have a whole lot of balance snowboard. I had to grab trees to get down through there. And knowing these things go up and down them hills like that, like a breeze. <laughs> well, Tracy, we are down to seven minutes before the hour. Oh, I know you right. said you wanted to get out of here at six. So yeah, yeah. we want to thank you very much for coming on and sharing your experiences. I love your description. Thank you so much. And would you please come back? And I sure will. The stories. Okay. Yes, I sure will. I'll, I, what I might do next time is maybe have some, uh, you know, usually I have a book or something like that with me and uh, go through it in more detail. But okay. after after been up all day, I, you know, ran off and forgot my little brown book that I usually carry with me and <laughs> didn't have wasn't prepared all that well. But uh, hope well, it, hope everybody if you has fun could, shoot us some of your audio too. Our listeners love to hear audio. Okay, I sure will. I've got two different audios. One walking up to the recorder and huffing and blowing at it, and uh, the right. other one is a scream. And I've got one that's got a uh, kind of a holler to it with a wood knock following. So awesome! Yeah. So, that yeah. would be great. They would love. Uh, that. I love audio. That's my thing. I love right. audio. Right. Well. Uh, uh, give a shout out to New River Valley and uh, give a shout out to the ECBRO tonight and uh, old Fred Caney up there in uh, Charlottesville, North uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, and uh, to my wife, my kids, and uh, all my family. And thank y'all for having me on. You're very welcome, Tracy, and thank you for coming on. It was our hey, honor. Thank, thank y'all very much. <laughs> good night. All right, good night. Well, I guess, folks, we're going to go to an early intermission, and I hope that uh, our next guest is called in by then. <laughs> so uh, if you'll roll that intermission, we'll take a break. I can do that. So we'll be back in about six and a half minutes. I think we lost Lori. I see her in the room. Well, Billy's there. How you doing, Billy? Oh, I'm doing good. How about you, Grass? <laughs> I'm doing just fine. I'm doing just damn wonderful. All right. Typical blog oh, talk. I think that's her play, playing around with the switchboard. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I got my little chocolate donut. I wasn't expecting to have a glitch. So let's see here. That's all right. Like our next guest. Yeah, is our next guest called in? Mm-hmm. 
All right, get him on. Get him on out here. Caller, are you with us? Yes, I am with you. Well, my God, the switchboard's actually working for once here. <clears throat> Let me tell them a little bit about you first here. I just wanted to make sure that part of it was working. Collier is a special. Am I saying that right, Collier? Yes, it's Collier Wilmot. Okay, just want to. Yes, just just Wilmot. Just wanted to make sure about that. Uh, Collier is a special effects makeup artist. He's also a sculptor who dabbles in areas such as painting, casting, molding, etc. Collier has always wanted to make a Bigfoot movie, but it has always been on the back burner. In the meantime, he has done some work helping out with makeup on some short movies. There he learned the process of making a movie. Then things started to slow down, and Collier, Collier decided he was going to make his own movie. He spent six months writing the movie, then building the fan base, and then putting some work together to get people excited about the project. And so join us as we interview the creator of Sasquatch, the boss of the forest. Collier, welcome to the show. Thank welcome. you for having me. Laura, are you with us? Yes, I am. Welcome I kept back. it with my telephone. <laughs> I don't know, but it just it died on me, and I apologize, everyone. <coughs> Hi, Collier. That's okay. Welcome I was to having the show. some kind of glitch, too. <coughs> Mercy. Well, we're we're just having a little issue tonight, and I apologize for that, Collier. And I welcome you to the show, uh, Collier. Can you tell us how you got interested in Bigfoot of all things? Well, it actually uh, is a a bit of a long story. Uh, stemmed from some teasing as a, I guess, as a young child, uh, from. Uh, people saying that they were going to leave me out in the woods for a Bigfoot to come and get me. And I guess uh, <laughs> from there it stemmed because uh, I got very interested. I would watch uh, documentaries like uh, uh, the whatever is on National Geographic, uh, Is It Real <laughs> series, um, <clears throat> Ancient Mysteries, and then Monster Quest when that came out. So... Pretty much uh, from there, it sort of grew and grew. I see. Uh, do you live in an area where there are Sasquatch reports? Well, I've actually looked at some uh, sightings map on the BFRO, and I guess uh, here in Iowa there are some uh, reports of uh, Sasquatches. Uh, I don't have a I have a map actually printed off where it has uh, – bunch of reports where there was uh, a bunch of reports around the uh, uh, I apologize I'm looking at the map right here the Dallas County and Polk County okay so how did you uh, I imagine you had to do quite a bit of research to write this movie didn't you oh yeah I did a lot of research pretty much uh most of it, uh, I don't want to say came naturally due to how I, like I said, I've always been interested and watched the documentaries. Uh, but there were some uh, great stuff that I would come come across when I was uh, researching. Uh, like uh, in, any interesting stories or people in the Bigfoot community. Like uh, like I said in uh, one interview uh, when I was on another show, uh, that uh, the main character, uh, uh, Debbie, she was based off of a real researcher that I came across oh. on Facebook. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. How do you think that your movie is different than some of the others that have been released? So well, extinct, uh, and have you seen extinct? Extinct? Yes. Uh, I don't think I've seen extinct. I've seen the, the movie exist. Oh, that's that's the one. I apologize. It is exist. You've seen it, and yeah, and, I've, uh, I've, 
and I'm sure you've seen Harry and the Hendersons. Oh, of course. <laughs> I remember that was actually the first uh, Bigfoot movie I've owned a copy of. Um, so where does your movie fall in between those two? Uh, Genre-wise, I would like yes. to say it tends towards the horror side, but oh, it's okay. not like a big blood and gore fest. It's um, like there it, there are violent scenes in it, but it's not like a high body count movie. <clears throat> like uh, oh. one thing I wanted to emphasize was that the Bigfoot is an actual character in the movie. He's not just a two-dimensional monster that shows up, rips people apart. <clears throat> he actually has its own his own story in the movie. And uh, its own challenges that he goes through, along with the uh, human characters. And how did you how did you base uh, that part of the story? How did you know how to write that? Uh, did uh, you just use your imagination, or did you base it on stories that other people have told you? Or I'm curious where you came. Because I have thought about writing a Bigfoot book, and uh, I, I and, and so I thought having you as a guest fascinated me because you spent six months and wrote this in six months. I think it would take me forever to write a book. Well, I, I sort of probably uh, exaggerated a little. Uh, it took six months to write the story as it is in its current form, but this oh, uh, movie has been. Uh, pretty much, like I said, in the works for over five years now, I want to say. Okay. And it's it started out as like a 15-page screenplay for a 15-minute short film. Mm-hmm. And then it just evolved over the years uh, where it, I just, uh, this past year, I just decided to finally take it more seriously. And then I started writing and eventually it came out to about a 100 page screenplay wow and so you and, have your like the good guys and your bad guys and, and, yeah, and that kind of thing and yeah and to answer your question on the how how I came to write the Bigfoot in particular the char- its character yes, I think it just I, stems from what makes a character in general interesting uh, at least uh what to me makes a interesting character and that sort of stems from uh my love of uh i guess like uh characters that have sort of a tragic backstory like mm-hmm. uh like characters like uh Jason Voorhees um uh, the Frankenstein monster, mm-hmm. Wolfman, pretty much uh, those classic horror archetypes. With the, uh, but then when I wrote it, it uh, I didn't want to make it like like them, but just uh, took cues on what they did before and what was done, and then also take cues on what has been done in Bigfoot movies in general. Like, uh, what, uh, what have they done? What did they not do? What, what are some things that some movies could have done, but they just weren't able to do? Well, it's like Harry and the Hendersons. They make him like a big old teddy bear. And, you know, a lot of people just kind of, they... You know, it was an endearing movie and everything. And uh, But everyone said that's not what it, Sasquatch is really like. That's what they'll say. And then then you've got the whole other end of the spectrum where, where the Sasquatch is a horrendous beast that just kills unnecessarily. And <clears throat> you think, as you're watching that, Sasquatch is not really like that either. And I'd always hope that somebody would put a movie out there that, you know, as close as we can get to what we know about Fast Watch and be more realistic. 
because I know there are stories that Sasquatch has killed. And I know there are stories out there from um, habituators who say they are just like humans and that they interact like humans and are friendly and are harmless. So it, to me, would be very difficult to find a movie and create a movie that was extremely realistic. Is that what you're trying to do is find a, a movie that – create a movie that's extremely realistic or more for entertainment or – you know, I'm I'm being honest here. I'm just curious what kind of movie this is. Well, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, my original intent was to make a movie that w- did honor the whole Sasquatch uh, uh-huh. world because, like I said, I am a big fan of it and – but I, I know that it won't satisfy everyone. But I wanted to, at least when I was designing the creature, I tried to stick towards what people described because this is what I always looked at it. Whether you believe it or not, there is a lore that you have to honor like uh, you would yeah. if you were tackling uh, any other movie that had a pre existing backstory and history. Like uh, you see, if you anybody don't takes over, with dreadlocks. you don't want a bigfoot with dreadlocks. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I get that. But I, <clears throat> when I uh, was designing it, I tried not to tend to be too monstrous. I guess. Yeah, oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I didn't want it to head into too like horror monster territory, but I didn't want it to head into too much of a huggable teddy bear. I wanted to be like a normal, like an animal. Like uh, animals, they can be scary, but they're not scary because they're big, mean, and vicious. It's just that uh, middle ground you have to reach, I guess. That that unknown, that mysterious, almost formidable respect that you have for an animal because you don't, don't know what it's thinking. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Grass, feel free to jump in. I don't want to hog this guest. <laughs> hmm. I know you probably have some questions. Um, well, have you have wow. you personally ever gone squatching yourself? Oh, I've sort of gone on a quick trip once. Uh, I was actually uh, visiting Illinois uh, where some family were, and I happened to I remember one of the first things I did, I got on the internet and I looked at a BFRO's uh, map of sightings, and there was actually a couple of sightings that happened close to there. So I had mm-hmm. my uncle take me out into the woods so I could do some uh, wood knocks and howls, see if I could get any response. Uh, I think I was like about a freshman or sophomore in high school when I did this. Yeah. So, so uh but we didn't end up staying very long because my uncle wanted to leave and because he was tired. <laughs> well, he probably probably would have changed his mind if y'all had heard something <clears throat> encouraging out there. Oh yeah, that would have been just funny to see what would happen because that part of the family likes to poke fun at me for my bigfoot beliefs. I guess they're real. I know you're making this uh, movie, but what is your opinion of their existence? you think they're real, or are you kind of on the fence about that? Me, personally, I I tend to lean towards the, yeah, there's got to be something out there. Uh, but I also like to look at it, no matter which way you cut it, there is something fascinating behind this, whether it is okay. real. That would be just amazing to think that there is a hominid out there that is so close to us. Uh, genetics wise even closer than chimpanzees or bonobos and if there is uh, more of a psychological issue behind it whether it's like mass hysteria or a cultural thing whatever you want to chalk it up to that's also fascinating to whatever it is that's causing that 
but I'm t- leaning more towards that there, there's a physical creature behind it. Are you going to have any parts of this movie that are based on someone's true experiences? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of uh, real... Uh, that's pretty much most of the... Uh, where I got inspiration from was reading actual Bigfoot reports and sightings, like the classics, like, of course, the Ape Canyon story. Uh, mm-hmm. Then uh, there might have been a couple of minor stories. Uh, one uh, that's always stuck with me, I can't remember uh, who the actual guy was, but I remember, uh, will always remember his sighting when he was doing this interview for a uh, documentary where he was at his tent uh, and he, there was something like uh, pretty much pushing in on his tent and he would always like whap it with his hand because he, he would think it was like a bear coming around to sniff because he had uh, bacon stains on his tent and he would always smack it and then the final time he smacked it it was he felt something bony like he hit a kneecap and then uh, he could see through the light this big silhouette of a hand come across the top of his tent Oh wow, that that'll be fascinating to see. Where are you going to film this? What have you figured that out, Collier? Where are you going my to film wishfulness, it? in all honesty, if I could have it my way, I would have. I would love to film it in Illinois, down in the Shawnee National Forest, because I know when I would go on uh, trips to visit family there, I would look into the forest and this vast forest and I'd be like wow this is a place where I would love to shoot a Bigfoot movie mm-hmm. and especially uh, in this place called the I think it's called Garden of the Gods uh, we visited this best place uh, this past uh, fall where there's this a bunch of cliff faces and rocks overlooking this forest which was actually not too far from where there was actual Bigfoot sightings because we actually passed a statue to mark where uh, there was some Bigfoot sightings on the way there. If I could, if we uh, could have it my way, I would love to shoot there. But we are probably going to shoot most of it in and around the my my hometown in Iowa. Mm-hmm. So, do you have someone selected to play the Sasquatch? Oh, like yeah, a really uh, big guy, like Andre the Giant kind of guy, or okay, is he going to be tall and lanky basketball? <laughs> okay, maybe not Andre the Giant level, but there is uh, somebody <laughs> selected to play the Sasquatch. He was the best Sasquatch ever, I thought, Andre the Giant. We were talking about him last week. Did you ever see that episode of Bionic Man with Andre the Giant as Bigfoot? Oh, yeah, you, I saw it. Uh, uh, yeah, I remember, classic. Uh, actually, when I was actually first starting this back when I was, I think, a freshman, I was up at a local uh, teen hangout, and uh, of course it's run by an older guy, and he was talking about, it, and he was getting all nostalgic and talking about, uh, um, describing pretty much his impression of when he saw this, uh, how scary it was, how great. And I, I, no offense to anyone who likes it, but I remember, uh, he just killed it because he described it way differently than the what the actual makeup on Andre looked like. Uh-huh. He described it as having big, gnarly teeth, uh, big red eyes, ginormous, uh, yeah, which the ginormous part was right, but. When I looked at it, I was like, this is nothing like you described, man. No, he really didn't look like the the Bigfoot. I, I've never heard any descriptions of a Bigfoot looking like the one Andre the Giant portrayed. It was, it, he, but the body size was what was impressive. And um, so I, I was just wondering, I guess through technical tricks and everything else, you'll make that regular size person look Bigfoot size. 
Oh, yeah. And also, one thing uh, that's also sort of a story point in the movie, not to give mm-hmm. too much away because that, that spoils the whole fun of seeing the movie. Absolutely. Uh, but it's something cool to have people walk into the movie, I guess, to keep in mind. The mo- Bigfoot in our story is not a full-grown adult. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. It's probably going to be, at most, a teenager Bigfoot. Okay. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to give you a few hints. You know, those young juveniles are very mischievous and daring. <laughs> so... Oh yeah, that's that. what, that's sort of why I can do I could use that as an excuse why if uh, Bigfoot acts this Bigfoot acts a little too daring yeah it's it's a teenager <laughs> exactly <laughs> wow wow okay so when are you going to start filming well I am hoping to shoot to try to start between. The end of May and or early July, because of the fact that our actual we are uh, going to be funding this through Indiegogo, and our Indiegogo is going to start on April 30th. And but we are mm-hmm. shooting a pitch trailer <coughs> to sell the idea, pretty much. Mm-hmm. This at the end of this month. We're going to put together a quick test trailer to and have it up in the middle of March just to give people an idea of what we want to do. We're having to cut I thought a little, you already uh, had a trailer out there somewhere. We do. We have a teaser. Uh, yeah, a teaser it something, happens. yeah. Yeah. And we are <coughs> trying to get another trailer together that is, uh, shows a little bit more and uh, – but uh, on a couple of the dates that we were trying to schedule in, either the weather didn't allow us to or we had some actors that couldn't make it. So basically that trailer evolved into doing a little short film to sell the idea. Yeah. Because... I can uh, just sit here and talk about how great this movie can be, but if we don't have something to show the audience, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna like want to risk anything. Right. So you're going to put uh, teasers in front of uh, an audience, or are you going to put it in front of a, a producer, or or, or what? basically going to go up on YouTube uh, around March 20th to the 30th and then I'm right. going to promote it on uh, a bunch of the sites like uh, Facebook, like we have a Facebook fan page and we have a Facebook group and I'll probably put it on a couple of other groups to sort of get the ball rolling even more because uh, oh, yeah. uh, this Indiegogo, how it works is people can uh, donate and depending on how much they donate, they get a corresponding prize, too. It's not just uh, that they're donating they get nothing out of it. They get a piece, uh, like a reward. Like if they were to, say, donate five bucks, they would get a uh, download, both a download to the movie. Don't quote me on this because I don't have the actual um, rewards up in front of me at the moment. And the everybody, no matter how much you donate, Everybody gets their name in the credits of the movie. Wow. Have you thought about going to a GoFundMe page? You know, those are... Yeah, I thought about that, but... Mm -hmm. But this is a caveat to GoFundMe. That's always uh, I've seen brought up, is that Mm -hmm. once people donate, the the donee who you're donating to, they have the money no matter what. There isn't Mm -hmm. that, I guess, reliability, and that would make people more, uh, I guess, hesitant. Mm -hmm. Because GoFundMe doesn't exactly, if uh, they are doing what we're doing, where we people get a reward, they don't exactly enforce that, like uh, like stuff like Kickstarter and GoFundMe, or not GoFundMe, Indiegogo. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, that's why I pretty much went with uh, Indiegogo because it has a little bit more flexibility than Kickstarter, but you still have that reliability that makes people trust you more. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, because uh, and I think that's also where most uh, independent films are being don't are funded, anyways. Because you get that flexibility. So you have a, you have access to camera equipment and everything, or is that all going to be later when you get the funding? Oh yeah, I've got access. Uh, I got a uh, fantastic cinematographer that I got in contact with. That we're actually doing a uh, pretty much a collaboration because he's going to help me out with my Bigfoot movie, and I went down the road. I'm going to help him down out with his own Bigfoot movie. Uh huh. Because he basically found me through the page. And he got in contact with me, and he's like, "Hey, I got my own Bigfoot movie. We want to help each other out." Hey. <laughs> and then uh, we get started talking. Uh, so basically, when my movie's done, he can he'll use the suit for his movie. And so, how long a uh, movie uh, and 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 result uh, movie going to be? How long? The the way it looks right now, it's probably heading towards an hour and a half. We're right. going through a couple more passes over the script because I, as I was going over it, I felt like the pacing was a little off. We needed a couple more scenes with the, the Sasquatch. You know what? It's always really worth it. Oh. Once it's actually in the can, it's physically done. What what's going to be the uh, uh, what are you going to actually do with it physically? Uh, um, well, I'm, I've pretty much been playing it by year, but I'm hoping to there because I just want to give uh, the Bigfoot community a very true Bigfoot story. And uh, I guess uh, actually one of the actresses that's helping out in the film, she works with or for a not sure entirely for a uh, distributing company, mm-hmm. so that might help us get uh, distributed. You're talking on DVD or just upstreaming or yeah. something like that, or what? Yeah, whether it's where we actually get a distributor or we might have to do it independently ourselves. So we'll just, uh, only time will tell, I guess. Good, Lori. You had a question. I did, but I'm trying to think what it was. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It just went right out of my head. I've been having that. That's oh. okay. You fell lately. out of the room. You fell out of the room completely a while ago, so you, you probably got a little bump on your noggin. That's okay. Oh, well, you know, I came back from intermission just blabbing away. I don't think anyone heard it. It's welcoming nope, everybody back. And- I'm uh, sitting here chewing on a donut. <laughs> what I was, I remember what it was now. You know, call your, you I'm, I, I was going to tell you that, you know, what really gets me on these movies that uh, I really get a big kick out of is what you don't see. That always scares me worse than what you do see. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. It's the, the old horror trick. Uh, Yes. That's not just the Bigfoot horror movies, any horror movie. It's all people are, always say it's what you don't see. It, it's your own imagination that will scare you half to death. Yeah. You know? And, and that's what. That's are actually, you going to yeah, try for moments like that and kind of. Uh, well, uh, yeah, there's always going to be that uh, the building, the suspense, because you don't see the creature entire, in its entirety right off. Uh huh. And oh, uh, awesome. just build up and up and up. But the way it's written, it's sort of uh, not going to be like, uh, I guess, the what you don't see type of movie. Mm -hmm. Mostly because I wrote this as a response to what I see too many Bigfoot movies do now. I'm glad you're doing it differently. 
I'm where glad you don't that use printer ever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you are bringing something forth that hasn't been done, but and yeah. that that's what's going to make it a success. Because everyone will say, "Oh, it's another killer Bigfoot movie," you know, and and I I, I don't know. <laughs> we just don't. I think another killer Bigfoot we, movie with the lowest body count ever. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. The final Bigfoot movie, it's going to be sitting there presenting flowers to everybody and hugs. <laughs> Harry the Henderson's Lots too. Of hugs. Lots of hugs. <laughs> Harry Boogaloo. So why did you uh, decide to call it Sasquatch, Boss of the Forest? Well, that uh, stemmed actually from its original title, which was going to be Oma, Boss of the Forest. But uh, I was actually contacted by a couple of guys that uh, Oma is actually not a real term for Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. It was actually a bastardization, basically, of uh, the Yurok Indians' word, Umaha, which meant bad Indian. Yeah. Which I then ended up uh, talking to some people that were of the Yurok tribe, and they verified that. So I respectfully changed the title. Because so, I didn't want to further any um, problems. So now, is that title set in stone? Uh, what Sasquatch boss of the forest or Yurok? Mm-hmm. Or the not Yurok, yeah. the Oma. <laughs> Sasquatch one. No, Sa- one. yeah. Oh, yeah, Sasquatch. That's going to be the the working title of the movie. You don't know about the boss of the forest. Part, or oh, Boss of the Forest, that's sticking because there's a couple of movies already just called Sasquatch. Uh-huh. And the Boss of the Forest part, uh, there was no problem with. It was just the Oma. And it's not, and you also hear in all sorts of uh, Native American war that Sasquatch is the Boss of the Forest. He is the the top creature that's in charge. Yeah, he's the apex predator of that forest. Yeah, he's a... Uh, he is, is really the boss of the forest, if you think or, about it. Yeah. Is this going to have narration of any kind, or is it just going to be dialogue? Oh, uh, there was going to be a... It was to open up with narration, but I cut that out. And it's mostly a Traditional dialogue, I guess, driven movie. Mm-hmm. Boy meets girl, both meet squatch. <laughs> uh, the, well, boy already met girl, meet squatch, then crap happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crap hits a fan. Oh, yeah. Uh so this well, teenage squatch. Us... I'm sorry, Go I ahead. keep stepping on you. This uh, is no, teenage squatch. That's all right. That's all right. Um, <laughs> you, are you going to show anything as far as what this teenage squatch is doing other than being a terror? Is it going to be uh, uh, like going back and forth between these humans and its family, or how are you going to work that out? Well, yeah, the um yeah, there is uh, gonna be some like uh, sorry, I'm having some weird issues with the uh, on my end. Uh we are like like I said, I'm going to rewrite so I'm adding more scenes with the creature itself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's gonna sh- there's going to be quite a bit result revolving around the creature. Um, as far as its family goes, there's there's like one scene in that involves its family, but awesome. that, that's towards the front of the movie, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much sets up backstory. I think that's awesome. That that call you something that has never been done, because on most of these Sasquatch movies. 
you don't really have a backstory on the Sasquatch. You don't really see the Sasquatch until the end of the movie when he's attacking and killing. You never see him doing anything else but that. And so that's why I think this is really a great idea because you're showing the Sasquatch in his own environment, doing his own thing, and then the interaction and everything else with humans and and such. But you actually have a backstory on the Sasquatch. That's never been done. Well, I don't know. You about think about ever. it. Of all the movies we've ever seen, there's never been a backstory on the Sasquatch. They just show up and disappear, show up and disappear, or death ensues, and you know what I'm saying. That is the way they yeah. usually are. And they're all. If the I don't same. know about never done because exists sort of touched on it. Mm-hmm. Granted, they had limitations because it's found found footage, so they can really show much of what's going on on the side of the Bigfoot. Right. But yeah, there are, like I said, like you said, there is uh, never been. You're, that's sort of what sparked it. And there's never been much for movies where the Bigfoot has his own backstory. What makes uh-huh. him the way he is, or this indiv- yeah. individual creature the way he is? Right. I just think that's extremely interesting. Yeah, and that's uh, I, is cool because. One of the coolest uh, moments when I was talking with one of the crew, I was actually talking to the composer who's going to do the music for the movie. He uh, described our Sasquatcher as uh, he's a very tragic character in a way. Hmm. Wow. And I'm glad to I'm glad to see that. You know, you know, on exist. Um. You know, that was a tragic character, too, but you didn't realize at the end why she was so violent. You know, she had lost her child, and that's why she was so violent. And it you could see at the end, but I was still angry because it was portraying them as a monster. And I really don't know what I wanted, but, you know, what, you, what you're going to find is that you can't please everybody. You're going to have Bigfoot researchers out here that want a real creature doing a real thing. But then you also have an audience out there that's wanting a horror movie. And so, you know, you've got to try to find that balance, and it's going to be almost impossible. You're either going to have to go with a horror movie. movie, If you're basing a movie that's basically around a a, a tragic incident and everything circles back and forth around this tragic incident, bouncing off each other, and then another incident happens, bounced off the first one, then that's that's all going to be horror, and you don't get a backstory. There is no backstory to something like that. Uh Yeah, and uh, I know I like to call this movie a horror movie, but there's sometimes I balance, I'm wondering, is it even a horror movie anymore? Because I actually uh, right. think about the story, and I'm just like, you know, this isn't uh, def- I I'm not sure if it's even horror anymore. I'm not even sure what genre to classify it as. I would almost uh, classify it as a docudrama. Almost. Uh, because it is based on partially through stories. Not like- it's not like a documentary type movie. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Adventure? Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, I'll make it then figure out the genre later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> figure it in post. Yeah. Well, somebody okay, upstairs yeah. will probably put you in a category anyway. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Well, Carl, you, you look really young. How old are you, if you don't mind me I'm asking? Actually, I'm actually 20. Wow. You know, this is a very impressive project for someone so young. And, and you know, you might turn out to be, grow up to be another Steven Spielberg. You know, I wouldn't I mean, go that far. Parted, <laughs> but you just never know. I mean, taking on a project like this at 20, that's amazing, truly. 
I'm very impressed. Well, thank you. Like you said, it's pretty much uh, started as uh, back when I was in freshman, but I never really got off the ground because of the basic. Basically, I'm a perfectionist, so mm-hmm. every time I would make start on the Bigfoot suit, well, basically just a mask, pretty much. I'd be like, oh, that's not good enough. I could do better. I start over again. Well, you know, if you're a perfectionist, this film might not get off the ground for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm getting better with that, sort of. That's good. Do you have any but advisors or anybody that's helping you with this? People, oh, I got plenty. I got uh, basically my crew. That's uh, one of the things that I was sure to try to do first, was try to surround myself with people that know what they're doing because that's one thing that I would always hear like uh, if I were to ask somebody that uh, has been doing this uh, longer than I have they would ask what are some mistakes that uh, younger uh, directors and filmmakers would do and sometimes it's just that they try to do it all and do everything and You just have to have a group of talented people to surround yourself with, and you just have to tell them what you want, what you need, and they'll work their magic and help you succeed. Succeed, whatever. (laughs) Getting my word mixed up. Exceed works anyway. That's getting beyond. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I'm exceeding. To infinity, to infinity and beyond. <laughs> I'm exceeding beyond infinity. Wow. So uh, I know that you probably have seen quite a few Bigfoot movies, haven't you? Oh, quite a few. I've uh, That's one thing that I did uh, when making this movie and so that was one tip I got uh, in a writing class uh, that uh, always when you're writing something, be sure to know what has been done before. And that goes for watching okay. any, any movie of the genre. So I watched all sorts of movies like Legend of Boggy Creek, Sasquatch, The Legend of Bigfoot, The Legend of Bigfoot by Ar- Ivan Mark, Sasquatch, Sasquatch mm-hmm. Mountain, Sasquatch Hunters. Assault of the Sasquatch, Abominable. <laughs> and no, on and none on of them made on it to the Cannes on. Film Festival. I'm, I'm, I'm totally disgusted. None of them made it to the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah. Yeah. Some of so them. So, what are your own career goals? <laughs> well, I'm I think I walked on your grass. Ask them the question. I'm sorry. All right. What are your uh, career goals for this? I mean, where's where's this going to help you? Well, originally I just basically wanted to be a makeup artist because I love the art of making a monster or a character because it's not always a monster. It can be a human person. But it started because uh, I guess I, w- I wasn't really getting much work being where I was at least not much people could work as uh, that takes time and money and so I just started writing this as uh, what would be my dream project of course Bigfoot movies Mm -hmm. and I've always wanted to make my own Bigfoot suit and I just always wanted to see a good a really cool Bigfoot movie and I and along the way I discovered that uh I want I would probably like to also be a director more than I would uh, almost a makeup artist and that I also have some other ideas for stuff down the road but we'll just see where this uh, takes us. 
Yeah. Because this uh, type of work is so unpredictable. Absolutely. So what was the worst Sasquatch movie you ever saw? Oh, that's putting me on the spot. Uh, I haven't heard it. There's... <laughs> There are a couple that I can think of right off the top well, of my how about, head. How about the best one you ever saw? Oh, the best yeah. one. That's all. That is also even a tougher question because <laughs> it's hard. For, I'm the type of person that's hard to pick favorites. But if I had to choose a couple that really uh, I really appreciate and love uh, for various reasons, one would be exists. Because that, that was, was a heavy really? inspiration. It was a heavy inspiration on this movie in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, I know uh, this one movie is not uh, rated. Uh, it's uh, Sasquatch Mountain with uh, Lance okay. Hendrickson. I just have a soft spot because that was like one of the first R-rated horror movies I saw. I saw in on a, yeah. a sci-fi marathon. The thing and... I liked about Exist was that uh, it was uh, so realistic. The very first part of it was so realistic, so dead on. And then as the movie progressed, I'm going, well, you know, it kind of it kind of lost me. But the very beginning was excellent. Uh, I loved it. Uh, the sounds that they had it making and the, and the way it approached the house and the things it was doing was exactly like uh, most Sasquatch experiences. And I like it because it's very authentic. So. I will say one of my favorite shots from Exist was the scene where the, it was at night and they're all held up in the cabin. And it's uh, not the scene where the creature actually attacks. It's where it's pretty much creeping up on the cabin, walking up uh, the steps, and you hear it's grunting. It's oh, yeah. Testing. And yeah, all you see is pretty much a silhouette. And I didn't think I could be scared, but it did. It was like, it made me a little anxious to go outside after I watched it, truly. Yeah. And it was a guest on our show that told us about it, so I had to go check it out. But... But uh, also to return to the question of worst Bigfoot movie, uh, I will say the one that I can say without a doubt is one of the stinkers, at least. <laughs> I make no apologies that I did not like it, is Hunting the Legend. I've never even heard of it. <laughs> oh, it was one of the Bigfoot movies that I found at Walmart. Oh, gosh. Uh, I uh, saw it. It had this... Uh, I knew it was found footage right away because it was had a camera in the foreground. In the background, you see this, what you would imagine of a typical monster movie Sasquatch. Big, sharp teeth, this nasty, inbred, <laughs> gnarly-looking face. So I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those. It's probably going to have a CGI Sasquatch. Ripping teens apart. Mm, all the teens are trying to have sex, and he's just ruining it for them. One of those kind. And to watch it, it's uh, <laughs> found footage with this kid, this emo kid whose dad gets killed. And he's trying to prove mm-hmm. Sasquatch exists, and at no point in the movie do you see an actual Sasquatch. Oh, oh really? Yeah. That's bad. <laughs> And that's why, why what I said where uh, that's what inspired this movie was that movies like that because I ended up coming across other movies that would do that. Mm. They and took I just, that. Well, it's, not, why, it's not what you don't see to the extreme, basically. Yeah. Because uh, that what makes what you don't see. Uh what makes it work is when you actually finally see it. Right. Because there is a bit of that payoff. Well, we're down to six minutes. 
there anything you oh, want to wow, share already. with us before the show's over? Yes. Really, and you need to keep us informed on how this is going, Collier. So, like, like uh, for instance, let us know. Just, just let me know on Facebook when your promo's out, your trailer, and we'll announce it on the show so everyone can go over there and look at it. Okay. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, just, uh, there's a basically the way pe- people can keep up with us is mm-hmm. to go to. You can go on Facebook and look, search Sasquatch Boss of the Forest, and there's both a Facebook page where you can like it, and then you can be up to date with all of our posts. Okay. And then you can also go to a Facebook group that we made, the Facebook Sasquatch Boss of the Forest fan group, where we like to post to our fans and keep them updated with how the progress is going. And they can also, I try to emphasize this because I, I like also when people post and share stuff to us, share uh-huh. stuff, just anything in the Bigfoot world that they want to share with us because we like hearing from you guys. And Absolutely. Like uh, recently, uh, I think it was last night that I must have posted it, but I posted an actual prototype mask, not the one we're going to use in the final film, but it's going to be the one that's going to be used in the short film because I'm making a pretty much a budget Bigfoot suit. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just insane the response that got already because I had some people questioning whether it was real or not. Right. <laughs> like... Uh, and one guy said he 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 was just so unnerved by it because it looked so much like what he saw. Wow! See now, that's great. That's great. Yeah. All I needed was just the black eyes and black fur. We basically we want we want people to to, to donate what they can towards this movie so we can have a different kind yeah. of Bigfoot movie out there. I think we've all been wanting a different kind of movie. Yeah, and keep in mm-hmm. mind that it's uh, the we are shooting to release the pitch film, the short film, on mm-hmm. March 20th. And then uh, on April 30th, we will be launching the Indiegogo campaign. Okay. It's not like you've got this figured out, Collier. How long will that campaign least, last? It will be at least 30 days. Right. Well, I wish you luck, Collier. Well, thank I really you. Think yeah, thanks. A young man that's going places, and and we're glad to get to know you on the way out. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. You're it was a welcome. lot of fun to come on. And, and we enjoyed you. We at, I actually really enjoyed learning a lot from you. So, um, I guess we are going to go ahead and call it a night. Do you have anything else to share? Call you before we leave for the evening. No, not much. Just, uh, for hopefully, uh, I hope uh, you guys can uh, come on and uh, like us on Facebook and join our group and help support us because this movie is made, going to be made possible by you guys, the listeners, and the people who love the genre and love Bigfoot. Because, like I said, even though I said it's hard to make it satisfy everyone, I believe me when I say I want to also make this just as much for Bigfoot lovers as I want to make it for me. Awesome. <laughs> Well, I, we appreciate that because we are due a good movie. We sure are. Well, um, having said that, Collier, we're going to bid you good night. Thank you for coming on. Everyone, next week we've got Randy, and I don't know how to say his last name, but I think it's Cutera, but I'm probably murdering it, and he's from Michigan. <laughs> so he'll be back, he'll be here this next Thursday. So thank you, everyone, for coming tonight, and we're going to call it tonight. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.
Bye. Good night. Little Caesars premium Detroit-style deep, deep dish pizza with more cheese and pepperoni is our most premium pizza experience. And now it's even more premium. Just call 1-855-TALK-DEEP and we'll compliment you while you eat it. This premium treatment isn't just for eccentric billionaires. It's for you with your shiny hair and very kind eyes. That one's on us. Pick up our premium deep, deep dish pizza for just 8 bucks and call 1-855-TALK-DEEP. Hot and ready 4 to 8 or order anytime, you cool rebel. Only at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. At participating locations plus tax.